Hi VC, Dale, Gatefold33, back with another video and this is going to be a show and tell video, um, one of my kind of infrequent show and tell videos and this is a uh, follow-up, uh, and I, I kind of mentioned this in my last video, a follow-up to a, to a Loss in the Collection a show and tell video that I made back in January uh, called Collection Direction where I talked about um, this cull that I felt I needed to undertake in order to kind of remove the clutter from my collection and make the collection more vibrant I think was a term I used at the time um, and more accessible and therefore get more enjoyment out of it than I felt I was at the time when I was in a bit of a fug over what to play and, and, and what to do with it. So um, I did go back and, uh, uh, and watch that video uh, yesterday just to remind myself of some of the rubbish I, I, I spouted um, and was, was it still true and, and a lot of it is it, it is still true I still do want vibrancy in the collection um, I'm still not sure what my you know I said at the time I think I'm not a 3000 record type of person which I was approaching um, at that stage and certainly would have you know passed by the end of this year um, and, um, you know, I made some kind of mathematical statement that I would therefore be a 1500 to 2000 record type person, I think. Um, but, you know, it's a journey. Um, so uh, I've just got a few other notes here trying to remember what I said. Yeah, so it was a mindset switch. You know, so I, was, you know, I, I, I said that, uh, you know, the thing that I enjoy about vinyl is that vinyl experience listening for, to a record front to back. That is still true. Uh, and, um, you know, I want to, to, to enjoy a record and, and I was going to say records would only justify their place in the collection if I really, really enjoyed them, really, really liked them um, front to back. And that was kind of one of the criteria for for the cull. Um, and. Yeah, and, and I also talked about um, some of the problems that, you know, records that have come out more recently and how do you compare them with records that have stood the test of time for 50 years etc etc so uh and i don't disagree with kind of much of what i said um but six months has moved on i've been actively participating in the carl where am i now so in in numbers terms uh so far this year i have um removed from the collection around 300 just under 300 records and i also have listed um so you could say remove the collection ar around just over 200 so roughly 500 records have been um removed or earmarked for removal from the collection um so i think i've made a pretty good fist of of culling uh so so what have I learned from that? So I don't regret anything that I've got rid of. I have maybe um, given some records a second chance that didn't fully justify the criteria. But you know, this is say this is not a it's not a rules based thing. It's a it, it, I, I think I said at the time it's a it's a, it's a gut and heart thing. So so yeah, some things I've been unsure about. So I've kind of given them a second chance. You know. But also there's sometimes I've been unsure about things and I've got rid of them. Uh, it depends on my mood at the time. And mood is something as well. So um, James Griffiths mentioned this in, in, in a comment on my previous video and I was going to bring it up here. So I'll, I'll cover it here. It is. So as I'm as I've gone through, you know, 500 have gone. I'm, I'm ten and I've tended to kind of go for some of the some of the more obvious candidates. Uh, to get through that 500 now I'm getting to some of the the harder choices and and so there is I think it is a bit of a harder choice and maybe I'm I don't know maybe I'm wimping out maybe I'm getting softer in, in my approach to this and I need to kind of give myself a good talking to about what I actually was trying to achieve because I am finding now I'm getting to more records. So I've got an, I've identified about a thousand records that are candidates. Still, still another thousand records that are candidates for revisiting uh, and reappraisal. Uh, but when I'm trying to, like you know, when I do my lost and collection videos and I'm picking ten records to to review, as I'm going through that list of a thousand now, 
there are fewer oh yeah that's obvious one that's that's highly likely to go that's highly likely to go that's high it's now kind of like oh they're all actually they're all pretty good um i don't know which ones to pick which is good which is good so um yeah so i think i'm reaching a maybe my happy medium or or, or, or is is a little bit higher than i thought um or to say or maybe i'm just not being strict enough with myself or or brutal enough with the collection so yes yeah, so, but mood mood is something that i, I have found because uh, yeah, I have certain times that I can listen to the records. So normally it's first thing in the morning before I start work. So I, I'm listening to a record after my, my wife leaves the house about quarter to seven uh, to go to, she teaches, she goes off to school at quarter to seven. And um, I've got the house to myself. If I'm working from home, I'll play a record. I'll get my coffee, morning coffee, and I'll play a record about seven o'clock. So obviously if I'm playing a, a punk or heavy rock album at seven o'clock, uh, in the morning my appraisal of that album might be harsher perhaps than if I was playing it at six o'clock in the evening or something like that so I need to be mindful um, that I don't make too many rash decisions just on um, on that aspect but also the mood yeah the mood you happen to be in will suit certain records and if you're forcing another type of record down your throat or into your ears uh, at that point in time there is a there is a chance that you're going to um, say no that's not for me that's not for me and then um, probably another day it would be and I think as I say as, as I'm getting to those harder choices um, I'm a bit I'm getting a bit more relaxed and and, uh, and, and maybe I'll be honest this is now a, a, this is a box standard purge that everyone else does really now I think the culling the culling bit has probably been done I've gone a bit hard and deep with the cull to start with and now I'm just in the, the purging and pruning phase but i need to keep on it because otherwise this you know i'm buying so i've got rid of 500 records but i've got in from different sources car boot sales record fairs record shops online purchases i've got in an, a, another 100 so yeah i'm net 400 uh so i need to keep on top of it otherwise i'll be back where i started within a couple of years uh and um you know but you know, it's not the end of the world it's not like you know <laughs> It's not my, nothing, nothing, nothing to uh, get on the on the news at ten. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so I will continue, and my loss in the collection will be the vehicle for that. And I might do another one of these videos in six months' time if I think actually there's something to say beyond yeah, I've just been purging more records, and I've purged some more, and you know, a hundred have come in, and a hundred and fifty have gone out. So I've I'm, I've I've managed to make 50 and that's probably not worth not worth making so if it were for me in that situation i probably won't bother um but yeah if, i'll see where i am in six months time okay so i just thought i'd give you an update uh so yeah probably you can all think yeah what was that all? So, so what dale yeah so what as as anyone would expect okay all right but um yeah cheers vc bye